hey, hey, go ahead and get out the carbon property notes. Make sure you're underlining, highlighting, writing on those notes so you're really learning from this. Okay, so this is all about the element carbon. And uh, the, the macromolecules that we've talked about, the living, that are in all living things, all contain carbon. Okay, so that's going to be your carbohydrates. They contain carbon. Lipids, they contain carbon. Those are fats. Proteins, they contain carbon. And then the nucleic acids, they contain carbon. So all four of the macromolecules in living organisms contain carbon. Okay, so organic chemistry is a branch of science dealing with elements that have carbon in it. So, so like these are all organic molecules. They're all in living things. So the word organic means that it came from a living molecule or it was a living molecule. So you are organic because you're living. But the leaves that fall in the fall, the leaves that fall down, those are organic because they came from a living organism, a tree. Okay, it's usually associated with all living organisms. About 30% of organisms' dry weight is, remember, that's is made up of carbon. So about 30% helps to make organic molecules such as carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acid. The original source of carbon, like how do we get, uh, well, we get carbon from eating it, from eating sugars and fats and proteins and DNA too. But the original source, like where did it come from to begin with, was probably carbon dioxide. And so carbon dioxide goes into the plant, and the plant makes sugar. And then we eat the sugar. So it originally came from the CO2. Okay, so the opposite of organic would be inorganic, and that would be compounds that, um, that are not living. Like water is not living. Water is inorganic. Um, CO2, the gas, is inorganic. Even though it has carbon in it, uh, it's not organic. So anything not living, soil, weather, that's inorganic. So organic would be living or came from a living thing. Inorganic would be not living. Okay, so carbon, if you look, if you look back at this picture, carbon has four valence electrons in its outer shell. So it has two on the inner shell, and then it has one, two, three, four valence electrons. And so what that means is that carbon can bind, so there's something can bond right on the red dot, the red dot, the red dot. So carbon can bind with four different molecules. So for example, I could even draw it out, carbon could actually bind with hydrogen, it can actually hold hands with four people. So carbon, because see there's another electron, carbon's electrons right there, and so this is methane, and it's full. It's got eight in its outer shell, so it's happy. Okay, so these four unpaired electrons allow carbon to act as intersections in the building of organic molecules. So if you remember when we looked at the carbon chain, in class and it had hydrogens on every on every carbon the carbon was used in the middle okay so um, covalent bonding capabilities of carbon remember covalent means that it does what with electrons shares electrons if that's what you were thinking good job okay so single bond between carbon atoms is like C dash C so you can see that in your notes. Double bond and then triple bonds. So you can see all that. Okay, so a hydrocarbon molecule is something with hydrogen and carbon. Let's, so there's your methane I drew for you. Okay, these are hydrocarbon molecules. So just a molecule with hydrogen and carbon in it. So there's your hydrocarbon molecule. Most hydrocarbons are energy, energy, energy. Hydrocarbons are important parts of cell membranes. 
so that's going to be the phospholipid tail. Remember, um, the phospholipid, this is carbon, and it's saturated in hydrogen. Y'all remember that? So this line right here, I'm going to make it yellow now. That line is carbon, and it's got hydrogens on every side. Um, all hydrocarbons are extremely hydrophobic. What does the word hydrophobic mean? Hydro means water. Phobic means fearing. So hydrophobic is afraid of water. So here's, a, here's another picture of a hydrocarbon molecule. You can see the carbon, 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 with hydrogens on either end. So all those hydrogen bonds are energy, energy, energy. There's your phospholipid, hydrogen and carbon in the tails. Remember, this is a saturated fat. This is an unsaturated fat. And there it is in the cell membrane, the, the phospholipids of the cell membrane. So the lipid portion is the hydrocarbon. Okay, so one thing I want to go back and look at... Okay, just talking about carbon, this is a picture of photosynthesis. I didn't mention it. And you can see here how plants take in CO2, and then animals eat the sugar, the plants. Animals eat the plants. And we release CO2. So this is just a carbon cycle. Okay, so let's talk about these functional groups at the bottom. Okay, so functional groups, it says they're, they're in organic molecules. These are the site of most organic molecules, um, chemical reactions. So this is just one, two, three, four, six parts that are in um, organic molecules. So it's like six little compounds that are in organic molecules. They're groups that come together. Okay, so the first one is hydroxyls. And all it is is an OH. So you want to draw OH on your paper. So dash OH, ash o, dash OH, and that's a hydroxyl. And that's going to be in, Think when, I want you to write in the word base. Hydroxides are in bases, like the opposite of an acid, a base. This group allows molecules to act as an alcohol or a polar molecule. So alcohol or polar molecule. Okay, the next one is a carbonyl, and that's C, and I'm going to draw it with you, even though it's there anyway, I'm going to draw it. C, double bond, O, single bond. Oh, that's not a carbonyl. That's a carbonyl. Okay, C, okay, so carbonyl. I'm with it now. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so carbonyl is C double bond O. C double bond O. And that one, it kind of tells you in the word. Car and then oxygen. Okay, carboxyl is C double bond O. And then it has the OH on the end. So think for just a second. What is just that OH? That's hydroxide right there. I'm making it yellow. That's hydroxide. So when you take and put carbonyl, carbonyl with hydroxide, it's called carboxyl. Okay, so look at the word. When you take and put carbonyl with OXYL hydroxyl, the first one, is so the third the third functional group is really the first one and second one put together. So you should be able to pick out this is hydroxide and this is carbonyl. And when you put them together, it's called carboxyl. Okay, carboxyl has two oxygens and it, it just tells you the structure there. These molecules can act as an acid by losing hydrogens. Okay, amino group in H, H. Okay, this is, I want you to make sure you know, this is in a protein. This is in a protein. So look right here. This right here is an amino acid. And you can see the amine group over here on the right 
And then what's this over here on the left? That should ring a bell. That's a carboxyl. Okay, so an amino acid is made up of an amine and a carboxyl. Okay, so when you draw, let me, let's just draw it. When you draw an amino acid, so draw this with me and label it amino acid. Amino acids make up proteins. So this is an amino acid, and that's the building block of proteins. Okay, so you got your amine group over here and all. And you have your carboxyl over here. Okay, so when you're looking at this in blue, this is your amine group. Amine group. This is amino acid. Okay, and then in green, you have your carboxyl. So, what two functional groups are in an amino acid? It's amine and carboxyl. All right, almost done. We got two more. The next one is sulfohydryl. It's an S and an H. The word tells you what that one is sulfohydryl. So, that one's easy. And it just, it's the disulfide bridges. You remember when proteins fold, it makes disulfide bridges. So that's sulfohydryl is in disulfide bridges. Okay, so when protein folds, sulfohydryl is what makes the folding. That's in the third structure of folding, sulfohydryl is what folds it. All right, last one and we're done. Phosphate. This is in DNA. So you got your phosphate, phosphorus in the middle, and then oxygens on either side. And this is negative, 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 negatively charged molecule. And it's in the backbone of DNA. So a nucleotide makes up DNA. And a nucleotide is made up of a phosphate, a five carbon sugar, and a nitrogen base. Okay, also phosphate is in ATP. So I want you to write that in. Because it doesn't like it says it. Oh, it does say ATP. Uh, but it doesn't say DNA. So DNA and ATP. ATP is energy. Both have a phosphate. And I really hope this was helpful.